Welcome to the Bravo Star of the Show Masterclass here at the Fabled Academy. Today we are taking a look at a deck list for Starvo in the Living Legend format with Florian Christian Login. He went second place at the Proto New Jersey with Starvo and we already covered Starvo's origin in our last video. Florian, welcome to the Academy. You know, thank you for having me again. Yeah, it's a right to talk about Starvo, to be honest. It's such a powerful hero and it's also so amazing to talk about whether the new meta will be changing for Starvo or will he dominate as he was back then? Yeah, I definitely think Starvo is more than in a good position to have some good results. Um, there are new cards and old cards that Starvo is allowed to play again. That being said, there are also new contenders, which didn't exist before. I think it will definitely be an interesting format and definitely a change of pace to what is currently classic constructed. Yeah, so in this video, we will take a deep dive into a deck list that you prepared for us where we can witness the full strength, full force, so to say, Starvo. But to all the viewers who don't know about the Living Legend format yet, check out the basics video that we where we covered Starvo, but also check out the video covering the basics for the Living Legend format that you can play this year at the World Championship in Barcelona. Now let's jump into the deck profile right ahead. Beginning with your decklist, Florin, what makes Star Wars a powerful beginning? Of course, because many of Star Wars' main strength is to dominate powerful attacks and give them go again. So if you reveal an Earth, Ice and Lightning card at the start of your turn, your next attack would cost three or more, uh, gains two plus two attack, dominate and go again. So of course this paired with the Guardian attacks, strong on hit attacks, can become very devastating. And in addition to that, you're allowed to play Ultim's favorite weapon, Winter's Whale. And you have ice cards, so they give Frostbite in this deck. So of course, this pairing becomes very strong, especially into decks that cannot handle Dominate well, which let's face it, are most decks. So that already puts you, let's say, on a good starting course. We can also see from the equipment, we have Crown of Seeds, one of the best equipments ever printed. We're playing Findles. Spring Tunic, another fantastic card. And of course, you'll have access to Stalagmite because you are an ice hero. That already from the equipment, you are, you're set up well. And of course, you can get to play all the Guardian equipment in the, in the other slots, like Crater Fist, which is just a three block. Of course, yeah. Um, so that's, the that's let's say, the base equipment. You can see the Shock Charmers. This is more a hedge at the moment. So for the, let's say, for the starting of the LL format, based on how strong Wizards are going to be. This is purely for that. You may play it into chain, but I don't think that will happen. But it was there definitely for Kano and, Ice and Icelander to have that. That's that. Let's say AB three when you need it in the turn, in the critical turn. Together with the crown, you go up to four. Yeah, that card may or may not stay. The same with Rampart. Rampart is definitely a card that, depending on how the meta shakes out, may stay in the deck or may may leave let's say the tectonic at the moment is for the mirror that's why you are double booking let's say the the chest equipment together with the stalagmite and shoes it allows you to block one powerful turn from the opponent so one dominate turn from them so you don't get crushed i think that's why it's there and the justification for it being there i can also see this maybe being dropped depending on what sideboard slots you need and then you just play the tunic to do the old pattern of Tunic Crown and play 5 card hand. But I think the rest is there to stay. You're also playing Winter's Whale as your main weapon as back then. Winter's Whale is also a weapon that we will see being played by Ultim. It, yes, Ultim is a legal hero in Living Legends format. Um, the difficulty with Ultim, which I think is a little bit of, let's say, shame, is that Star Vol can do a lot of what Ultim did because you are Earth Eyes Guardian and but you have access to Crippling Crush which they don't have access but I have access to their open ult because for some reason that is not an Ultim specialization <laughs> so I think I think Star Wars is going to be a lot, carrying a lot of the winters well <laughs> because even if you want to play this let's say tankier builds of Starvo or of a Guardian you will still be playing Starvo I believe and I think for the beginning of the format, I don't see fatigue decks 
flourishing, let's say. I could be wrong, but I'm very skeptical. Yeah. When we go down your list, what are the key cards to look out for in your main deck? Yeah, when people are going to look at this deck, they're going to think, what is this? How does this all make sense? But essentially, because your goal is to show Earth, Lightning, and Ice each turn, you want to be playing a good ratios of those cards. I think in this deck, as far as I'm aware, it's 17 of each element that you can show. Of course, the pulses help because they count for two. So you have one Lightning Ice, one <clears throat> Earth Lightning, and one Ice Earth <clears throat> Pulse. These are, let's say, the filler, if you so will, of the deck. And then the power cards are, of course, Crippling Crush, Spinal Crush, Oak and Old, and Starstruck. We know this from Bravo currently, let's say, in Classic Constructed. But as bad as it is in Bravo, it's much, much worse in Starvo because it comes for 13. Okay. It's got Dominate. Uh, the same with Oak and Old, because Oak and Old will always be fused when you show and tell, let's say. So it will be coming for 11, and this one only needs to hit. So you need to block the full 11, which on a dominated attack for most decks is. And if you pair it with a Pulse, then it will come for even more. So the Pulse of Old Haven. And then the newest addition, which you didn't have access to, in terms of attack cards are Starstruck. The way this works is if it has a crush effect, if you deal four or more damage to a hero, the only attacks they may play or activate, that means also weapon, during their next turn are attacks with base greater than the damage dealt this way. So that means you need stuff that has, just when it crushes, it needs to be four, it needs to be five, <laughs> so base five, and then it goes up, right? Because this is coming for 12 and it's dominated. So you block with a three, you're basically not doing anything in your turn. Or you're not attacking me, at least. Yeah. Um, you can see this. Uh, even in the mirror, it could be that you cannot play a card if this hits you. Right? A very strong addition. Those are from, let's say, from the attack side. And then from the defensive side, the biggest upgrade, let's say, that you didn't have access to is Hypothermia. This was an Uprising. The card that, that stops the go against. So attacks you control. So you play this and the opponent receives it, it's an affliction. On aura, attacks you control can't gain go again. This does not affect attacks that naturally have go again. So if it's written go again on the card, this doesn't affect it. But all the cards that require go again, for example, chain gives go again, they just can only play one attack. Um, and because the big attack in Starvo has go again, you can just play hypothermia afterwards. So rather than swing the hammer, you just give them hypothermia. And then they're basically locked for one turn. Yeah. Which, uh, this might not sound like a lot. It actually becomes an, a, a problem that Chain needs to solve, especially going into the later stages of the game where they have high blood death. So even though at, at the beginning it can seem to the Chain player, or at first thought it doesn't matter, then I'll just have three extra cards in my blood death. But those three become six next turn. And you're not clearing six the turn after that. Or let's say five. You have five cards in blood death and you're just going to bleed down to that. So that's, let's say, the issue for the chain players that they didn't have to face before. Yeah, and then I think I put it in the sideboard for now, but it's, of course, a fluid concept. It's Awakening. So this card was banned for, let's say, most of the time that Starvo was alive, at least for the big tournament. So at Pro Tour 1, this was banned. The card says Earth Fusion, if you have less life, then an opposing hero creates seismic surge tokens equal to the difference in life. If it was fused, instead create twice that many seismic surge tokens. Then you can search your deck for a guardian attack action card with costs less than or equal to the number of seismic surge tokens you control. Reveal it, put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So this is an instant and it costs two. So crown costs one, this costs two, that's a blue. You can see how this has become very devastating. That's why you also have a pulverize as well on the sideboard. So what this does is this becomes, let's say, an equalizer so you getting a pull so pulverize costs 10 right but if i'm fusing it with earth it only costs five or it's for free that's just i can search for it and it's for free playing a free pulverize and then if i can show and tell on top of it that 16 would go again for free that let's say swings the game back into my favor this was the problem that chain had before the awakening ban. you could so chain can't choose when the da it can choose, but chain wraps up its damage and it needs to do the damage. Chain can't go slower. 
I, I don't know if that makes sense what I'm saying. So it blocks with a few cards and then it needs to play its blood then. But it needs to play its blood then. In the turn. So because you can't stack it up too high. You can stack it up at the beginning to build powerful turns. But when you have three, four, five shackle, you're committed to playing them out. And then the Starvel player can, with awakenings in deck, can basically navigate that much better. Especially when you start getting to low life tools. So because I can earth use it, I don't even need to be down 10 life, which is a lot, right? I can be down just a little bit. I can be down five life. Or I can even be down three life. And then I can get something for six. Spinal Crush is five. So if I'm down three life and I can earth use this, I can get a Spinal and play a Snap Final for free. Or I can get a Crippling Crush. Or I can get a Starstruck. Yeah, that's the things that people need to be aware of now. That this is a new Star Wars and what is what has been around. Also for five, this is a problem. Right. Yeah. So not only am I getting it for free, but I'm getting the on hit that I need for my deck to hit you with. You have 60 cards in your main deck here and Awakening in the sideboard. Are there any additions that you would make depending on the meta that you're facing in the Living Legend format? Yes. So basically, so we talked a little bit about equipment, so you could get one or two slots. I can also see playing less defense reactions in the sideboard. So we played a little, we tested a little bit of Starvo with Awakening. But it could be that the games play out now that you don't need to be so defense reaction heavy because of awakening. So before the problem you had is you couldn't catch up to the other Star Wars player in the mirror. So you wanted to have these defensive solutions to their powerful turns. Because if they drew their crippling crush before you and they crippling crush before you, you were very behind, right? But now that you have Awakening, maybe you don't need to rely so heavily on so many copies of Defense Reactions. What this means, it frees up it frees up your sideboard for other on-hits, which are specific. For example, Crush the Weak, I think, is a card that we could look at, or Chokeslam. I don't think they will find space, but these are cards that you can find. Like... There are cards that you could look at if certain decks become a problem. Another card, then of course, you could talk about Oasis for Spites for Wizards, if that's really something that bothers you strongly. Or you can look at cards to beat Prism. So in the previous video, we saw the Leader Charges, which were there for Prism. We saw the Time Skippers, which was the equipment for Prism, that gives you two action points for a blue. Leader Charge gives you an action point when you play a card that costs two or more. So that gives you the chance to kill two, two auras, for example. Or kill an aura, get your action point, and then attack. Those are cards that I could see. Pummels, some people played Pummels. I don't think that's gonna, it's gonna find the space. Unless it's a artistic choice, let's say. But yeah, I, I can't think of anything else at the moment. These are cards that you can play with in the sideboard. But I think also in the main deck, if you want to play this kind of Star Wars, I think, of course, you can argue about playing three blinks. So like, why am I playing three blinks if I'm not scared of Prism at all? You can cut the blinks completely then and just put in a lightning card that blocks for two. But this is one card that could be cut. The same with Blizzard. Why do I need Blizzards? You're never going to cut the Blizzards because, at least I don't think you're going to cut the Blizzards. Because Fi exists and this card is just not fun for the Fi players. So you are going to want to have that in. But these are the cards that you can potentially look at to cut or to to switch into other cards yeah then there's artistic choices that say if you play the blue frost fang or if you play a blue icy touch but these are not uh, let's say really they're not going to decide a lot of games these choices yeah so these are cards like you're if you're playing this card out you're not doing great <laughs> let's say <laughs> so yeah all right so before we close down the deck list and come to the matchups in Living Legend format, is there anything you want to specifically highlight here? Yeah, I think the deck is, I think this is a good deck for people that want to get into the LL format that don't have a deeper, let's say, understanding of certain heroes. So Chain is very complex to play, I think. Prism is very complex to play. I think Phi, if it turns out to be a, a, a a good competitive deck in the format, which very well can be. I think it's a very po it does very powerful things. That is also a deck that people can look to pick up. But I think Starvo, because of its, let's say, very proactive and very naturally strong uh, 
lines of play is a very appealing deck to start on. I also think that the play there are complexities to the game which you can grow into, but you do not need to succeed on this deck, right? You can just fuse three turns in a row and you will win. That doesn't sound very fun or exciting or challenging, but these are games that you will have with Starvo if you are looking to win the Battle Hardened at Worlds. It will be a deck that will give you free wins. That's what I like about Starvo. You can also just take Starvo's in completely different directions. You can take Starvo into a more classical Guardian direction. There are people that at Pluro to one played a more defensive value-esque Starvo that resembled or had similar cards or ideas to the old him lists that later came out, where you're leaning heavier into the Winter's Whale. Um, you can play, you can approach it in that form. I personally would not recommend it because of the power of the format. I don't think the format will stay as it is, to be perfectly honest with you. I think there will be some bans or, I don't know, maybe limitations to one. I don't know if they want to take that approach from other card games where they say, if I have this eternal format that where everything is allowed, maybe I have limitations of one rather than completely banning out a card. But I think, yeah. I don't think you're unfavored if you pick Starvo. So let's talk about the best matchups that we can run into with Starvo when playing in the Leg Living Legends format and also highlight a few of those decks that you need to be aware of but that are really easy to win. I think because of the on-hits that you have, you are well positioned, let's say, into decks that go wide. So you have Spinal Crushes. You have the Starstrucks, you have the Crippling Crushes. This, these cards historically do well against Fies, against Runeblade decks. So everything that is a Runeblade deck, or a Runeblade-esque deck that goes wide, so like Fies is one of these decks, let's say, you're going to be hopefully favored. Then any sort of mid rangey value-esque deck that likes to attack for 7, block for 6, Tech for eight, block for six, whatever value deck you should be favored because you are, your, let's say when you are, when you are show and telling crippling crush, the value of that turn is just so much higher than what they will do with their normal value plays. Let's say, so you should be winning those. You should be favored into fatigue matchups because you're just naturally dominating. Uh, so you see, I'm going through a lot of the archetypes that you now find in classic construct. I think this is important also for the people to realize that LL is not going to be classic constructed. So we're not going to be playing, for example, now that the deck that won US Nets, the Briar deck, I don't think this deck is going to be good in LL, for example. So you're favored against those matchups, or you should be favored. Uh, where you're a little bit softer is uniquely Prism because you cannot handle the, the growing board that they're building, you, your deck is just not equipped to do that well. So when they're putting two auras, you can only clear one aura. But each aura that you clear is four lives because the hammer is killing the aura instead of attacking them. When they play two auras, you can only clear one. They attack you with one, play another aura. And they have quite good defensive tools. That being said, Starvo is not ultim. Starvo has the dominate power with go again to create powerful turns that can go and force the prison player to leak damage. I think that matchup is close, but we'll see how it shakes out. The Phi deck is something that's a little bit of a question mark. It is incredibly strong and incredibly bursty with stubby hammers, of course. The stubby hammers is a plus six damage card, right? The headpiece is a plus six, seven damage card. There's just a lot of damage on equipment that you basically, you're essentially starting with less life, right? Because of those cards in comparison to if you're playing other decks. And they're very consistent afterwards. It's not that if Fi does that, they're not doing any damage afterwards. I think that matchup is going to be interesting to test. And Chain, of course, Chain is Chain. You have the, the value of banishing from the top of your deck, which effectively is extending your hand size. If you break with Starvo, if you're not doing your powerful attacks, your deck is not going to look very powerful. This is something that people need to be aware of. It's not Starvo is not 
show and tell crippling crushes every turn. Yes, some games go like that, and it can feel absolutely unfair. But some games, just the Sarbo player is just half blocking, half attacking with bad attacks, and you're just thinking, this is the best. I think games are not going to be close. A lot of games in Living Legends are not going to feel close, and they're going to be more volatile than people expect. But for that, you're going to be doing more powerful things than you're doing in Classic Constructing. I know I took a little bit of an excursion now to, to what your question was, but I think it's fine. I think we, yeah. it's, it's the expectations of how a matchup looks in Living Legends format is going to change for people than what they expect in Classic Constructed. That's right. right, yeah. So I think that's what I was trying to say in more words than one. It, it is a little bit hard, I think, for talking about a format that we haven't witnessed yet and that will maybe change rapidly after the first tournament is over. But it is safe to say that a few of the hot contenders are already established. And also we have seen, like you said, Fi full power. We saw that in a tournament already last year. And we will see that deck exactly like that in the Living Legend format. And it is quite interesting now that, for example, like a deck with Starvo that has access to Awakening, how that will pair up against a deck like Fi. But it may be over even faster than you think of it. Even when testing it a lot of times, I think it can be quite astonishing when <laughs> finding that out. Yeah. So. It, we already touched a lot on the key play patterns for for Starvo, but is there anything you want to highlight about Starvo's play patterns? So I'll summarize it in a few sentences for the cliff notes. Where essentially you wanna do your you wanna show and tell as often as possible, and in the turns where you cannot do this, you wanna minimize the damage you're taking in order to extend the game, for you to have more of these windows of possibility. This includes crowning for extra cards. This includes blocking and arsenaling a powerful card. This includes chip blocking and attacking with for seven to maybe force the opponent either life or cards or just go down in life with them. But what you need to be aware of is when are my power turns and you want to have the life and the armor to be able to do your powerful turns because nothing will suck more than drawing that nice powerful hand and you being at seven and having to block. Yeah, that's gonna hurt you the most. Uh, so I think that's something that you need to always keep in mind. And also be aware of your ratios, not mathematically like to the percentage point, but be aware of, okay, I have five more lightning cards or 10 more lightning cards where I have so and so many lightning cards and I need a lightning card. Like how good is the chance that if I go digging for the lightning card for me to find the lightning card? Most of the times you will crown anyway to find the card that you're missing, right? Yeah. But you, these are micro decisions that you're taking during the game that you need to be aware of. Also, in the mirror is more complex than it seems. Well, awakening makes a big difference. Defense reactions make a big difference. There will be games with Starvo where you're not taking game decisions or, act, or <laughs> meaningful game decisions where the deck, you are just a passenger and the deck plays itself. But there are going to be games where you will need to survive for you to do the powerful things or for you to increase the chance of you to do the powerful picks and that is what starvo boils down to and i think people are going to enjoy playing a deck that does not that is a little bit different than what they're used to in classic construct yeah all right so at the end of the video here do you want to give any bonus tip or is everything covered here already bonus tips i think I, I gave most tips it's the tip is just play the deck uh do unfair things and uh win the tournaments yeah let's go win the living legend battle harden at worlds with star Wars. <laughs> get that prism and give it to your prism friend that chose to play prism all right so at the end here again do you want to shout at anyone florin i played with a lot of people also back in the star Wars days too many to count but Everyone knows who I've been part of either testing teams or that we've just met at tournaments or played against. Thank you all. And if you want to say hi when you see me, I'll be. That'll make me very happy. 
All right, definitely do that at the World Championship in Barcelona. Florian, thank you so much for taking your time, preparing the decklist for the Living Legend Battle Harden at Worlds for us and diving into it. Thank you for having me. All right, and to all the viewers, thank you so much for tuning in today's masterclass. If you found this lesson helpful, leave a like on the video. Comment down below for Florin if you have any questions left and subscribe to the channel for future masterclasses. Also, check out the existing videos on the channel.